Before we get started on today's video, we wanted to let you know that we're on our way to 800,000 subscribers and we've noticed that a huge percentage of you guys that watch our videos every week are not subscribed to our channel. It only takes seconds out of your day to press that subscribe button, especially if you enjoy this content. We launch videos every week so you can get notified every time there's a new one. Thanks for all your support. We hope you enjoy the video. Hey everyone, Tyler with Ligari Products and I'm gonna show you what our concrete repair kits can do for you. If your concrete looks like this, spalling, pitting, flaking, simply deteriorating in front of your eyes, don't replace it, resurface it and make it look brand new just like this. So on this 100 square foot kit, we're gonna be coating this apron to the driveway, the sidewalk, has a, has a few different names. Um, and what I'm gonna do is hold that pressure washer wand really close to all this pitted out, spalling concrete. And what I'm trying to do is eliminate all the loose stuff. Pop that up, get that out, because we don't wanna coat over anything that's gonna eventually pop up. So I'm gonna take that wand, hit all this stuff. Now a lot of this stuff has already chipped up that it's um, from driving on it being down like that for a while you guys might have it where it's it's relatively fresher uh spalling and you're going to get a lot of chunks to pop up but i'll kind of show you the process so what i'll do first is take the pressure washer get every square inch of this spalling any loose stuff chip that up and then i'll take the pressure washer wand and then we'll clean the whole thing off and we'll show you those steps next So we're gonna go over how to tape your uh, project off, right? We're just coating this apron here so we don't wanna get overlay on this or out on the road there. So Tim's taping off this outer edge. We're using blue tape as uh, anywhere we can if we get a good bond. Now sometimes the blue tape's not gonna stick well to like rough surfaces, poor surfaces, so then we'll use the yellow tape. But just keep in mind this yellow tape tends to leave a sticky residue behind. So we try to minimize using that whenever we can. But if we're not getting a good bond and seal with the blue tape, we'll use the yellow tape. Um, so he's taping that off. And then we have the mastic here separating the apron from the, the concrete. 
So we have mastic is what you call it. They'll put this in between pores sometimes, usually uh, sidewalks and stuff. So we have the driveway here, the sidewalk apron to the driveway. We wanna tape this off because overlay is not gonna bond well to that. It'll eventually chip off. So we're gonna tape that off. Now the blue tape's not gonna stick well to that. So we're gonna use a yellow tape there and we're gonna try not to step on that. The more you step on this yellow tape, the more that residue will stick and it's just a pain in the butt to pull off. And we'll probably wind up pulling this off after each coat and retaping, just to keep a nice straight edge here. It's gonna look a lot cleaner, be easier to pull. Um, but yeah, so we're just going around anywhere we're not gonna coat, we wanna tape off. And if you guys are worried about getting, you know, overlay out here, you can run some paper out there, plastic. We just did two rows of blue tape um, and we'll kind of be cautious of getting product past that. And you wanna make sure you're pressing that tape down really nice and tight, that way you get a good seal. And same thing with the front, we're gonna do another strip. Use a blue tape, because it's not gonna stick as much. Leave that residue behind. And then when you guys are taping up to a, an existing concrete pad, you wanna tape on that top edge. So you'll see where Tim's taping that. We don't wanna stuff that down into that joint, because the overlay is gonna wind up locking it in. So, so tape right on that top edge there. And then that'll make it easy to pull later. Okay, we're gonna mix up a 100 square foot concrete repair kit. Now, I'm gonna mix up step one right here. Every step is the same. So, um, the first thing we're gonna do is pour in the liquid polymer. We're gonna add the liquid modifier to that. And then we're gonna slowly pour in the concrete overlay, the texture coat, and while we're blending slowly with the drill. Open up the polymer, pour about it half of it out because some of the polymer settles to the bottom we want to secure the cap let's just shake it up really well dump the dump the rest of that in now if you dump it quickly you may get some liquid at the top of this handle so just make sure everything's out of that handle now we'll add the liquid modifier We'll just blend that a little bit. Now I'm going to be doing this by myself. Obviously it'll be a lot easier to do it with someone because you want to pour this bag in as you're blending. Now, when you receive your concrete repair kit, it will most likely have different bags than this. They'll probably be brown. They'll be a little bit easier to pour, but it's the same idea. You're gonna add it slowly to the liquid polymer. Blend this for probably two or three minutes. Make sure it's like a really, kind of like a runny paste and all the chunks are out of it. Okay, that's mixed. This is ready to go. What's nice about this kit is they fit in a five gallon bucket. So we're gonna rinse this, this paddle wheel off and then get this to Tyler. We'll start applying it. So before Tyler starts applying this repair kit, notice it's very sunny, it's very hot. We recommend doing this while the temperatures are dropping, while it's maybe shady, but of course not going to rain. 
Um, even like getting towards the evening or just an overcast day works the best. If you do it in the sun like this, that's fine. You just have to make sure that the concrete is really well hydrated. And even though we're going to be using uh, you know, a pump up sprayer, when I spray this into porous concrete, watch how fast it evaporates. Right, if I completely, if I completely saturate that and I make it dark, within about 10 seconds, that water evaporates and gets soaked into the substrate simultaneously. So what we like to do is we like to do what's called, we, we like to satisfy the slab. So we'll get like a cold garden hose out here and we'll prehydrate really bad areas, especially if there's sun on it. Now, the key to hydration is you don't want puddles. It doesn't really matter how much water you spray on a slab, you just don't wanna be applying the concrete overlay when there's standing water. So I'm gonna put this on like a, not a mist, but a soaker setting. I'm just gonna cool this slab down and satisfy the concrete real quick. Be cautious of the tape. We don't wanna completely soak the tape, especially when you're using a hose. Obviously, you're gonna get a little water on the tape. Try to avoid that because you don't want the tape, you know, peeling up and causing issues. Now, even though I've sprayed the hose on it and it's already starting to dry, I'm doing a couple things. I'm putting moisture in the concrete to satisfy it a little bit but I'm also cooling down the slab. So when I spray my hydration on it out of this small pump up sprayer, it doesn't, it doesn't evaporate as fast because I'm essentially cooling the slab down. So we'll probably start on this side and I can even go to more of a, you know, like the flat control a little better. Okay, now I've cooled down this slab quite a bit. So now, especially again on a hot day, we need a dedicated guy, just like every overlay job, no matter what it is, every repair job, every overlay job, you always gotta have a dedicated guy with hydration. So while Tyler's doing this, just notice the whole time I'll be behind him and I will be keeping this slab dark, but no standing water. I just, I wanna keep it wet but I don't want puddles and I'll be doing that the whole way and it'll be easier for me to keep up with the slab because I've prehydrated. So on the background, in the background, that's what I'll be doing just in case you're wondering. So Tyler will start putting this down. All right, so I'm gonna start one in, trowel out both edges and just kind of work back. And again, make sure you guys are hydrating. That's very, very important. We're gonna be using the, uh, the steel trowel here. Basically gonna ride on all the peaks of the concrete and it's going to let the material fill in all the low spots. So just after one coat, this should look pretty relatively flat. Now I recommend doing smaller beads. We don't want to pour just so much out that we're fighting the material the whole time trying to move it. And this is what it looks like. I'm going to apply pressure hold it at an angle and just scratch this material as tight as I can get it. Now I'm not worried about little miss spots like this. By the time we do our other coats, all that stuff's gonna fill in. I'm just worried about getting the majority of it filled in, cleaning out all my joints. So I'll get a section done, clean out these joints. We don't want a bunch of product just sitting in there. And you can see right here where it wasn't hydrated, this is already dried out. So that's why hydration is key. Everywhere that we had good hydration, it's still wet, it's still pliable.
and it's gonna make it a lot easier for you if you pour beads down your edges so you have product already there. So I'm not trying to move product up there to those edges. And once I do that, <laughs> angle this squeegee out a little, just get enough to flow over there to fill that. Now that whole edge is done. All I gotta do is clean it up. Now I'll come over here to this edge. Clean that up and you can see how fast that goes by just pouring the product in the right spot. So I like to just do sections at a time, do a couple feet on my edges, both sides work in the middle, a couple feet on my edges, both sides work in the middle, and always make sure we're hydrating as we're going down. Now that prehydration that Tim's doing behind me is gonna save me a lot of time from having to spray the hydration because it's already kind of satisfied with the moisture. I won't have to spray as much. It's gonna go a lot smoother. So again, pour a bead down our edge. Do our edges first. Clean out all our edges, our joints. And we just focus on the middle. Now notice I'm getting to dry concrete. We want to stop. Now, like Tim said before, if you guys are doing this in cooler temps, morning, towards the evening where the sun's not just blaring down on the slab, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you. So we do recommend doing this stuff when it's cooler out towards the evening, towards the morning. It's gonna make your life a lot easier, but this obviously shows you that you can do it when it's extremely hot out. You just have to really be dialed in with your hydration. So I'll show you guys a little trick. Say maybe you want to stop, take a break, clean your tools. Um, easy way to do that. So I'm going to grab some blue tape. Now I can go to that joint, stop, get something to drink, clean the tools, whatever it is that you need to do. Um, and then we can kind of continue the process once we're ready. So real easy way to kind of split it up into sections so you're not kind of stressing out. But very, very simple as long as you're hydrating good, keeping that slab hydrated really well and have plenty of people helping you.
Now if you're stopping like this, we definitely don't want to pour big piles out and have to clean a bunch up. So when you get close to your stopping point, just pour out less. Notice I'm not even bringing it all the way to the tape. I'm not worried about it. Because this is a joint, we'll be able to clean it out when we start again. Now what I'll do is I'll stop, I can pull this tape. Now we have a spot to start when we're ready again. And I'll go clean off the trowel. All right, so got the tools clean, got a little water. Um, now we're ready to rock again. So first things first, we gotta hydrate. Never want to go on a dry slab. Since it's just soaking up so fast, I'm spraying enough so it kind of pulls up, but I know that it's going to soak right in. Now I'm getting close to the end, so I wanna make sure I'm not pouring a bunch of product out, right, that I have to clean up. All right, so there you go. So there's our first coat. <clears throat> I'm not worried about these little chunks. I'm gonna show you how to scrape those off. And, and even if you have some, some trial marks or lines, I think we had one like right here, very minimal. Um, so very forgiving first coat. We're not worried about stuff like that. We can address that before the next coat. Um, since this is already hard, like right here, I can show you. We have a little trial line there we just scrape it off. So not worried about any imperfections like that. Once it sets up, we can knock any of those drips, lines off. Real simple. So we'll let this set up and then we'll show you guys the next, next coat. So before we apply our second coat, like I was telling you when we were done yesterday, we can take that, that metal scraper that we used to apply it and we can knock off any of the chunks. So I just like to go around, like we got some chunks here. Just knocking those off. We got a couple here. And it's not a bad idea. Stuff like this, just scrape the whole thing real quick. So I'm just gonna brush off any of those chunks. You can take a blower, blow them off, either way works. And then once we get this cleaned off, Tim's gonna start prehydrating. Again, we wanna get this overlay satisfied with uh, moisture so it's not sucking it out of our overlay. Now we're doing it in the morning now so it's not as hot out and we do recommend doing these coats morning time, evening time when it's not middle of the day, sun's out, super hot. Always good to do it in colder temperatures when the sun ain't out. <clears throat> but again, we always wanna prehydrate, get some moisture in that. So when we start applying it, we don't have to spray as much water for hydration and it's not gonna be soaking all that out of the overlay mix. So it'll give us more working time, make it a lot easier to use. So that's one of the biggest keys to having a successful project is making sure you're hydrating well, 
you're prehydrating before you even start. So we'll go mix the product up. Now you're gonna mix the, the second coat, same way you mix the first coat. They all are mixed the same. So we'll get that mixed up and then we'll show you how to do the second coat. We're gonna be using a little bit different uh, tool to apply it, um, but everything else is the same way. Prehydrate, hydrate as we go, pour out small beads and we'll show you guys that next. All right, so I'm gonna go over the tools real quick. That first coat, we scratched it with the, the metal scraper, right? The metal blade. Um, these are mainly for, you know, doing drywall stuff like that, but they work great because they go on a pole. We don't have to bend over. Um, you can typically get these at Home Depot Lowe's. You can order them online, red, readily available. And then on these next two coats, they're actually a lot easier to apply because we're just using a squeegee. Now you can get these squeegees at uh, Home Depot Lowe's. This is a Marshall Town. It's called a Magic Trial. They have them in the drywall section. You can also order the craft squeegees from Amazon. Those are usually what we use, um, but we wanted to get the supplies from Lowe's for this project, so this is what you would get. Um, and again, like I said, it's gonna go a lot easier because it's a little bit more forgiving. It goes faster because we're using a squeegee versus a rigid uh, metal scraper. So again, guys, we hydrated, we prehydrated, and then we're also gonna hydrate as we're coating. So Tim's gonna do the hydration. I'm gonna pour out the product. And you'll see this will go quite a bit faster. Now when we're doing the squeegee, we still wanna apply pressure, hold it at an angle. And I always like to get my perimeter done first and then just kind of focus in the middle. So get all my edges, clean them up. But you can see the, the crushed marble in the mix is putting it down all the same thickness. So it's basically acting like a gauge rake because of that crushed marble. So don't worry about pressing too hard you just want to kind of apply an even pressure as you're using it, moving it around. Make sure we're cleaning out all our joints. Notice I'm always patting this so I'm not dripping every time I go back out there. And I'm just making sure I'm not leaving any squeegee lines out there, thicker, thicker material spots. Now we just fill in the middle. Notice Tim's constantly keeping this slab hydrated with, with water so I'm not going in onto any dry concrete. That's very vital when you guys are applying this stuff. It's not a bad idea to have some paper out here to give you a little more free play. Um, we obviously do this quite a bit, so we're pretty good at controlling it, but last thing you wanna do is make a mess. And if you do get some product out there, you can just spray it off with the hose, um, pick the majority of it up, and then just kind of spray it off with the hose. But notice I'm kind of working in sections at a time. I don't, I'm not running like 10 feet down my edge, right? I'm doing like two, three foot sections, doing my edges and in the middle. So we're constantly finishing it as we go. Because if I would run down my edges, maybe 10 feet, by the time I finish all this and get to that spot back there, it's gonna already be setting up. So we just kind of work sections at a time, get it all the way done and then just move on down the line. All 
and if you guys watch when I when I'm trawling the beads out I'm always keeping that product kind of in the middle because I don't want it pushing out the side so if I have product towards the end see it'll start to push out the side now I got to come back and clean that up so whenever I'm finishing the beads off or moving beads I'm making sure that product really isn't going past the middle of there and it'll never push out the, the, the front of that. And just like the first coat, this is very forgiving. If we have trial lines, drips, anything, we can scrape those off. We can sand those off before our final coat. And it's nice because you're getting practice with the, the squeegee on this coat for the final coat. Um, and again, it's not not that big a deal if we have any spots we gotta sand down or scrape off on this coat. Now, if you have some maybe pitting that you're noticing, some low spots, like right here, instead of pressing hard, I can kind of come over that nice and light, and it'll help fill in those low spots. So that is an option if you notice any like maybe deeper spots that didn't get filled in as well on that first coat. Just go over it a little bit lighter, and then just continue applying that pressure on everything else. Like I said on that last coat, guys, that first coat, when we get close to the end, we don't wanna be pouring out big piles, big beads. It's good to kinda of almost run it all the way out to see where you're at, and then just pour small amounts. That way we're not picking up a bunch of the product at the end. So now we know we just need a little bit more to finish this off. And notice how thick that's gotten. Um, if you guys run into that, just take your drill, mix it up again, and it'll just re-agitate that material, and it'll make it a lot more fluid. So if it's starting to get a little thicker on you just by re-agitating this with the drill, it's gonna make it a lot more fluid, easier to work with. Simple way to kind of thin that material out. I'll just pull the excess from the joint up onto the blue tape. And then we want to flatten off. I'll leave this, I'll leave that trowel line and, and drip out there and then show you how to address that on the next coat, but very, very simple. So. You can see it goes a lot faster than the first coat because it's just easier to move the product around with the squeegee. So we're gonna let this set up. Now typical setup times on this, you can do multiple coats in one day. Um, just depends on the temperatures, but, but theoretically about an hour to two hours, you should be able to do another coat um, given the temperatures. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we'll let this set up and then we'll show you guys that next coat. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to do our final coat um, of the overlay. Uh, and we, it's always good to re-tape before your final coat. Two coats is fine to overlay, but you get three coats over that tape, it can, it can kind of be a pain to pull the tape. So we like to do those first two coats, 
pull the tape, retape those spots. And what we did is we already did these, these long spots at that end. We left this here so I could show you how to pull it. Um, and I'll kind of just show you, and depending on how thick you've built up your, your joints, you might need a, a putty knife or a scraper or something, but the best way is to get that, that piece off. And then if we just start on the back and kind of fold it up and just keep working it until we get to that edge, it usually wants to pop off nice and easy. If we try to just rip it up and tear it off, it's gonna start tearing everywhere. You're gonna have a bunch of stuff left over. So see, we just kind of get it to that spot where it's tape ends and it's gonna just pop off. Now you might have some spots where we have to use a putty knife or a scraper to get it up, but as long as you're taping high like we showed you, especially on these joints, and that's why we don't want to tape down, way down into the joint, because you'd have to cut that out. All right, guys, I'll grab a scraper, show you how to get these thicker spots up. All right, guys, so you can see the thick spots here. What I'll do is I'll just take a razor blade, and I'm not worried about cutting a perfectly straight line because we're gonna tape again, and I can get that a straight line with the tape. So I'm just gonna cut with the razor blade this thick stuff out like so. Make sure I don't see any tape in there, right? We don't wanna leave any tape under there. A Little bit right here. Pop these up. And now we can retape this. Maybe tape up, we'll tape up here again, obviously. And then it won't be such a buildup after this next coat. We can pull that tape and we should have a relatively nice straight line. I mean, granted, we got some chunky stuff here, right? It's rough, but we can get it as straight as we can using that tape. So then we'll just clean this out. Now we can retape. And again, make sure you guys are taping high in these joints. We like to go like right on the top edge. Now when we go to pull this tape, it's gonna pull really easy. Should give us a nice, relatively straight line. I mean, like I said, we got some pretty rough chunks here. We're not gonna get the greatest seal on this stuff, but that's all right, we can clean that up later. Make sure we press that down good. And then we like to either do paper or just two rows of tape, and I'll show you how to do the paper because we're gonna be brooming this one. And we'll be pulling the broom down from the top and we're gonna wanna put some paper down below here to, so we're not getting any overlay past the tape. And then same thing like I showed you before our second coat, we can scrape off any chunks, debris. So we have some stuff right here. We're just trying to knock any of those chunks off. All right, so after you knock off any chunks, high spots, stuff like that with the scraper, if you have like thick spots that aren't scraping off, you can always palm sand that with the 80 grit, sand that down, um, but relatively simple. We just wanna make sure we hit those. And if you guys are coating and you coat over a chunk or something like that, you can always scrape it off, pull the chunk out and then keep going. So don't worry about if you miss a spot, right? You wanna try to get those first, but sometimes you don't see them all. I'm just gonna broom this off. Now blowing it off is gonna be be a lot quicker on larger projects, just, just blow everything off, but wanna make sure we knock those chunks off the pad after we scrape. Get any dirt, debris out of here. All right, since we're gonna be brooming this, that broom's gonna wanna pull a little material with it. We're gonna broom from the top down 
And what's gonna happen is it's gonna pull that material off here. So what we're gonna do is run paper all the way down this edge. We we'll want to make sure we press that down good that way we're not getting any product under that tape and then I'll just tack some spots since it's a little breezy out today it's not a bad idea just to paper off your whole area you're coating that's gonna make it a lot easier you don't have to be as cautious when you're doing your edges picking your trowels up right so if that's something you want to do that's a great idea kind of mask off your your perimeter all right so you can see we've we've retaped everything this edge was retaped like I showed you on that side and then what I'll do is I'll just run a piece of blue tape if you're not doing plastic uh, paper or anything or masking it off it's always good to have at least two rows of tape and then I'm gonna use the blue tape again guys we like to use the blue tape when we can we use the yellow scotch tape here because we want to get a good tight seal on that mastic, but I'm going to grab that blue tape. I'm like a machine, that's how you do it. So now we are ready to go. So what I'm going to do first, <clears throat> I'm going to prehydrate. We'll mix up the material. I'll prehydrate it again probably. It's very important to prehydrate. You can see how dry this is. Sun's out. We recommend doing this stuff when it's morning time, it's cool out, evening time. You really don't want to be doing this in the hottest part of the day. Um, but again, hydration is key. And I'll show you how, how we prehydrate just like those other steps. And you'll see it's going to dry out real fast. This is just kind of getting this slab satisfied with the water. So when we start, it's not gonna wanna suck all the moisture out of our overlay as fast. So since I know we're gonna mix after this, it's gonna be a little bit, so I'm just gonna kinda spray a decent amount. Now when we start, we just gotta make sure we don't have puddles of water or pooling up. So if you guys have maybe some puddles or it's too wet, take a blower, blow it off, take a that squeegee kind of squeegee around the water. But I know we're, we don't have any shade here. The sun's out. I want to make sure I hydrate this really, really well. And if you guys are wondering how to mix this third step, every, every step, first step, second step, third step, it's all mixed the same. So just refer back to step one mixing. Um, and all these steps are mixed the exact same way. So if you want to go back and watch that, just go to step one, we go over how to mix. So very, very simple process and then we're gonna apply it the same way with a squeegee. But as, while it's still wet, I'm gonna run that broom across it to get that broom finish on it. So you can see how much water I've sprayed and it just keeps soaking it up. This is what we call prehydrating. This is one of the most vital points of a successful overlay project. Try not to spray the tape too much also. We don't want to soak that tape. If you need to get to your edge, just come down closer so you're not spraying so much on the edge. All right, so I'm happy with that. Everything looks wet now. We don't have dry spots. Again, it's gonna dry out on us relatively quick. Before we start, I'll prehydrate again. And then once I get it to about this point, we'll start pouring that mud, that overlay, and then we'll hydrate as we go as well. So we'll show you guys that next. Okay guys, so we're gonna apply this third step. Again, hydration is key. Notice how the slab doesn't look dry. It doesn't have standing water. We don't have puddles, we don't have runs. We're basically ready to go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you two looks here. You can, you can leave it, just the squeegee finish, just, just squeegeeing it off and leaving it. It's gonna give you traction. You just won't have that broom pattern. The other option is I'm gonna show you the broom. So I'll start out and show you what the squeegee looks like. And then 
we're going to show you how to broom this whole thing to kind of match sidewalks, driveways, stuff like that. Just keep in mind, stuff like this, sidewalks, very simple to broom. If you guys are doing front entryways, driveways, bigger, bigger areas, it's a little more complicated doing the broom. So we do recommend just leaving, leaving it with the squeegee finish. It looks good. And again, it's going to give you that traction. So we'll show you kind of both right here. But again, we recommend the squeegee knock this stuff off spread it out and it's going to look really awesome so tim's going to hydrate for me because again we want to make sure it's always got hydration down with that water and then i'm going to spread this out with the squeegee and then put the broom in it that broom texture and i only want to work in sections so I'm gonna get the top, the bottom done, get a couple feet out, put that broom in it. So guys, I think I'm just gonna finish this out to this joint and then we'll work back that way so we're not getting my shadow so you guys can kind of see what's going on a little better. So if you guys are just gonna leave it that, that squeegee finish, this is basically what it's gonna look like. It's gonna have that texture. It's gonna have the, the, the traction that the broom's gonna give you, but you don't have to do the added step, which Tim's gonna show you now. He's gonna come through with the broom and he's just gonna hold it low and pull it off. That's gonna give you that broom texture. And that's why we put the paper down because it does pull some material off. I think I'll coat this next square and then we'll work the other way. That way I don't have to pick this material up. So typically when you're brooming concrete, you're spraying water on the broom, on the pad. We don't do that on the overlay. So we're just brooming it. We're not spraying any water and you just run it down straight as you can get it. And then if maybe you had a crooked one, you can go back and hit that one more time if needed. So I'm just squeegeeing the material out and we want to get that broom on it right away. We don't want to wait. And notice how he's overlapping that previous section. Since I'm going to stop at this joint so we can flip around, I'm just going to pour a little bit out. So as soon as you can get a broom with, right, you don't want to broom if I got a bead right here. You want to make sure I'm far enough away so you're not hitting that bead of material. And then you want to get that in there as soon as you can. And it's an easy way to stop and regroup, stopping on joints, even taping a, running a piece of tape, stopping like that. If you guys want to stop, maybe clean your tools. Maybe you have to mix more, who knows? Joints are great for stop and start points. And I'm not worried about if I have lines out here and stuff like that, he's gonna be brooming it anyways. So after you do a couple passes, it's good to just clean that broom off because it'll start to get a little thicker on that broom. Spray it off the water, wring that water out, and then just continue brooming. So again, guys, easy way to stop and start these joints and even put a piece of tape there so you don't make a mess. We can stop on the joint, pull the tape, and now we can kind of wash stuff, regroup. But again, we're gonna start at this end so you, I, my shadow's not over the pad and kind of making it so you can't see it as well. All right, so you can see how this is dried out. We stopped right on that joint, guys. We got our tools clean, filled up the sprayer maybe with water, cleaned the broom off. Now keep in mind, it's never good to leave the bucket of material sitting in the sun. We do this a lot. This is a small pad, we're not really worried about it, but always try to keep those buckets in the shade in a cool area. Don't just let them sit out in the sun. They're gonna, it's gonna dry out on you a little bit quicker. And then if you're pouring this stuff out and it seems like it's getting thick in there, put a drill in there, re-agitate it. That's gonna make it a lot more fluid and a lot easier to work with. 
So we're ready to go. So same thing, I'm gonna squeegee it out. Once I get enough spread out for the broom to come through, that broom is gonna come through right away. And if you pour your beads out like that, it's gonna go a lot quicker when you're spreading it out because now I pretty much have material on all the edges. The edges are what take the most time. So now I can just run it over the edge a little, all the way across both sides. And notice how Tim's not just waiting for the broom to go, he's back here prehydrating still. Oh, there's always something to do when you guys are doing the overlays. Whether it's hydrate, pour a bead, put that broom in it. Just make sure you have enough people when you guys start these projects. All right, so now all I gotta do, clean up my edges. Get this material far enough back so Tim can start brooming. Now notice we got a chunk right there, guys. I can take that scraper. Obviously you guys want to address these before, but if you can get on it quick enough and we can knock that line down a little bit. Get those chunks up. He can just run that broom down it one more time. Again, you got to do it right away. And what I'll do is I'll just get them a little product there. Now we don't have that big chunk sticking up. Easiest way to not really miss any of those or make sure they're flat enough is just run that scraper through the whole pad. And if it looks like it's sticking up, assume it's gonna show and just maybe sand it down if you can't get it with the scraper. 80 grit palm sander, relatively fast way to get rid of imperfections. Notice how everything's kind of wet. My edges are a little dry, but I'm not going on a bunch of dry areas. Pour them beads down the edges. Tim's washing that broom again, right? We want to kind of make sure we're keeping the broom clean. It's not getting all chunky on us. Notice I'm not going very far on my edges. I want to just do a couple feet at a time. That way everything's still wet when he puts that broom on it. So the ideal amount of helpers you guys would want would be one guy hydrating, one guy squeegeeing, one guy brooming. So that's kind of the, the recommended amount of people you should have on projects. Obviously smaller stuff, you wouldn't need as many, but if it's your first time, it's always good to have enough help. And then obviously if we're not brooming it, we don't necessarily need a guy running the broom. So you could get away with maybe one less guy if you're just leaving it a squeegee finish like we have here. All right, so last pack is again, we did these two, then we turned around so our shadow's not in the way. Since this is our last pad, we don't want to pour too much.
want to try not to spray a lot of water on that pad that we just did. So Tim took the mud over, he's mixing it up. Gonna make it a lot more fluid. Just run that drill in there, mix it up. Again, we don't want to be waiting like this, so it's always good to have enough people, have everything set up. But if I wanted to, I could broom this while he's doing that. Just overlap a little, hold that thing low. Now that we're going up to a spot that we did, we just want to get a little bead on that edge all the way down like so, and then just clean that up. Now when he brooms up to this, this is already setting up so he doesn't really want to hit that pad. He just wants to be right in that joint. And I'm just gonna run any excess off onto this paper. All right, so I wanna make sure we're cleaning off tools. We're gonna put uh, some caution tape up. Obviously, we don't want someone walking on this. It is a sidewalk, people walk around here. So we wanna make sure we caution it off so people know not to walk on it. And then you wanna make sure, um, if you guys are gonna do that final coat, that you're able to apply the sealer to the top coat the same day because what'll happen is people walk on it, they got footprints, right? It's not a sealed surface, so it's porous. It's prone to staining before that sealer gets on it. So make sure if you're coating that final coat, you're able to apply that sealer. So we'll let this set up um, and then we'll show you guys how to do the sealer. So we're basically ready to seal, but I wanna show you guys an option. Um, and it's actually a good practice to do before you seal is we're gonna saw cut all these joints, these hand cut joints, and that's gonna give us a little free play when the slabs uh, move during free thaw cycle, stuff like that. They're not hitting each other and kind of chipping chunks out. So that can happen. Now, it's real simple. We're just gonna take a little small angle grinder, get these at Home Depot, and then just a concrete blade for cutting concrete, okay? And I'm just gonna run this down the middle here and that's going to open up a gap here so when this slab is kind of moving from those cycles it's not hitting itself and, and it's more prone to chipping so that'll give it that little eighth inch uh, free play to kind of move expand and contract during those freeze and thaw cycles um, so I'll hit the joints we'll probably hit a couple here to show you I might hit some out there um, real quick I'm going to be wearing a mask eye protection some uh, ear protection and then I'll just have Tim blow the blower to just kind of keep the dust out away from us Make sure your feet are clean because if you walk out here with dirty feet You're gonna leave a footprint and then you have to wipe that off before you seal. So I just have kind of a wet rag here Get my feet clean and then I can walk out here and what I'll do is I'll cut Up and it's gonna shoot the dust behind me and then he'll just blow the blower at me and it'll keep that dust kind of behind me and you want to always make sure these are off. You never want to set them down on a finished pad. Go plug them in. Sometimes these are locked on. They'll start spinning. You'll wind up cutting a slit in the pad. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're going to set it down on, on a finished uh, project and then go plug it in or something. You want to make sure these things ain't going to just kick on. So that's, that's basically it guys. We're just trying to create a separation gap here. So if these ever move and kind of hit, they're not prone to chipping out these chunks. So it's always good to do that. It's not, you know, you don't have to do it, but, um, and then if you have, uh, maybe you're doing a larger driveway or something, you can get bigger saw blades, a bigger angle grinder. It'll cut a lot faster, but small stuff like this real quick. You saw how fast that was. And when you start, just start in the middle of your joint, sink it a little bit, and then just keep, keep it sank down in there and just let it kind of do its thing. And that'll help you keep cutting it straight. All right, guys, we're getting ready to show you how to mix our WB sealer. So I'll kind of go over the mixing process. Very, very simple, single component. Um, 
these buckets you'll just have to slit the sides right because it's a, a a poor spout lid so if you can see they have these little notches you'll just take a razor blade kind of slit those open and that will allow you to pop this lid off because we do want to mix this a little before we get started just in case anything's settled in there and we're going to be using just a paddle wheel corded drill i'm going to put it on low obviously it's pretty full so we don't want to splash it around I don't have any buildup on the bottom of here, so it's probably fine. So we'll just mix low speeds, 20 to 30 seconds, and then we'll wash this off with just water, easily cleans with water. That way we can reuse this paddle wheel. All right, so this is basically ready to go. We'll just pop that lid back on. and then pull the spout off. It's got a little seal here we're gonna pop off. And now it's ready, ready to pour in our sprayer. So things you'll need, just, just a drill to mix it. You can mix it with a stir stick as well. You just wanna make sure there's not anything on the bottom there. And then always good to Use a strainer when you're pouring into sprayers, just in case there is something in there. We don't want to clog that sprayer up. And we really recommend the cheap, these are just cheap Ace from Ace Hardware Store pump up sprayers. They work really good. They spray that fine mist and that's kind of what we're looking for. So I'll kind of show you the process of pouring in. We're going to use that funnel. And then you can pour this into another bucket to get less in there, but if you tilt these backwards and pour out of them backwards, it's it'll pour out a lot more evenly. It won't start splashing and Notice how I didn't fill it up all the way. It's about, about right here. We wanna, if you fill it up too full, you can't get enough pressure in there to spray it good. You always have to pump like every few seconds. So try not to fill it all the way up. You can hear that release valve go. So that tells me I got the max pressure I can get in there. And then we always want to test spray. So it's spraying at a stream right now. You want to get this spraying at a nice fine mist. Just like that. And we're basically ready to go. So again, guys, clean your feet. And if you see footprints out here, something, someone walked on it, just take a wet rag. You can wipe those out. Just real quick. Doing kind of circular motions. I'm about a foot and a half, two foot off the, the concrete here. Got a little bit of a breeze. But this will dry extremely fast. And we can just keep doing multiple coats. So there's our first coat. Again, we're doing two to three coats. You want to do that second coat within about a half an hour um, <clears throat> or once it goes dry you can kind of see where it's right where i first started still a little wet here but once it all kind of goes you don't see that moisture in the in the surface we can apply that second coat so you guys can see kind of some bare spots that i missed you're going to get that the next coat every other, every coat you do is going to be better and better so don't don't try to hit those as you're going we're just trying to do these coats thin, 
like I said before, guys, do this stuff when it's when it's cooler out. Temperatures are cooler. We recommend doing the your final coat morning and then that evening applying the sealer because again you want to do it the same day. So same thing again. Real quick coats. You want to make sure we're getting all the way to our edges. Small stuff like this, relatively easy, but it's always good to take time, mask everything off, then you don't have to waste your time holding cardboard, stuff like that. So we'll let this set up for about a half an hour or until it's dry, and then we'll apply that third and final coat. And then this is basically done. We can pull the tape once everything is dry. Um, so we'll show you that third and final step next. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to do that final coat. And same thing, we just apply all these three coats the same exact way, thin to win. Make sure we're keeping this wand above the ground a little bit, circle motions, and that's all we gotta do. Just make sure that sprayer is nice and pumped up so you're getting good pressure. Spraying that nice fine mist. Get that even coverage. So there it is, so this, this pad's basically done. Once this completely dries out, we can start pulling all the tape, cleaning everything up, and then you'll probably wanna give it a 24 to 48 hours before you drive on it, let everything kinda of cure out. The overlay is gonna be at its hardest point after seven days it's fully cured, so just keep that in mind. But we'll show you pulling tape and all that stuff next. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you how to pull the tape and you're gonna see why we recommend re-taping before that final coat. Most of this tape should pull up real simple. If we were to not re-tape and we had three layers of overlay on that tape, it can be kind of a pain. So just remember to pull pull that tape and re-tape before your final coat, get everything cleaned up, and then it makes cleaning up a breeze. So we'll start off, get this secondary tape up. We'll pull this outer spot. Get this paper up first. So pulling tape, if you re-tape, is relatively simple. Again, we wanna get that paper kinda up. So once you get the paper kinda removed, then same thing, we're just folding it into it until it gets to that edge. And you just kind of fold it back and forth. And if it's pulling easy, just apply a little pressure, a little tension on it, and pull that up. And you can see how nice of a, a seal it's leaving us there. Nice crisp edge. So when you're on your, your sidewalk here, same thing guys. Start from the back of the tape and just kind of move that up. If it starts pulling easy, just apply that tension. Just like that, so we'll finish cleaning this up and then we'll show you guys um, how amazing that sealer is and some final footage. So if you guys are having a hard time pulling the tape, maybe you had some thick, uh, overlay in maybe a joint or something or where you tape you had a lot of overlay on it just take a razor blade and you can cut it out just get it down in there and then when we go to pull it and you can see all the nasty residue this tape leaves that's why we like the blue tape we just, we just knew it wouldn't stick. The blue tape wouldn't stick as well to the mastic. That's why we use this tape. But if I try to pull this without cutting, and you can kind of see, because it's got a little thick here, even with that one coat, if it's, it's pulling good here, but if it gives you problems and starts tearing like that, just cut it. 
cut it before you pull it. And then you'll see how nice it'll pull. Perfect, just like that. So that's an option right there. If you guys are having a hard time pulling some tape or anything like that, just cut it out. 